Right, so continuing on the project, I need to pull this bracket out of here. I'll drill the spot welds and then there's a couple of little brackets in the foot well there, which aren't in the original car. This is the donor car we're filming now, um, which I'll need for engine computers and the like. So I'll drill a spot weld. Probably throw a tech screw in to hold them in until I'm happy everything's right and um, just weld them with the MIG. Alright, so drilled the uh, spot welds out. This isn't my normal pine tool, I can't find any the smaller one, but okay, so these ones might just need a bit more of a drill here. Alright, the project continued. Um, Clean all this floor up, treated a little bit of surface rust, put some sand, black sand deadener on it. I'm now about to mount this bracket here, which holds the, I think it's a computer for the, um, the airbags and that. So I uh, drilled the spot welds out with a cutter. A um, couple of, I had to go through to get them off, but that's all right. Um, now I've marked it in, took all the measurements off the old one. That pin up the top there stays the same, which just makes it very handy. So now I'll just um, plug weld those to hold it on. Like I said, it's nothing structural, it just holds a computer for the um, airbag. All right. A few uh, decidedly dodgy plug welds, but we'll just go in and clean them up, keep touching them, fill the holes up, and we'll be right to go. Right, so um, I've put all the, the sound deadening, all this one down here, back in. Cleaned the floor a bit, put a bit of deadening spray on. Wiring loom starting to go back in here with the computer boxes. Pedal boxes back in. Um, this cross brace, I don't know what you'd call that, but the dash mounting bar, I suppose. HVAC's all back in again because I had to pull it out. Um, so things should start to move along now because the little fiddly jobs, you've got lots of jobs that without much work, looks like a lot of work's been done. We'll crack on, see how we go. Right, so now columns in. We're going to use the new key to uh, unlock the steering to give it a bit of a twirl and make sure the shaft is in proper. Next to be the, uh, the dashboard housing. Okay, so the engine's in. Just sitting there at the moment. And the gearbox is in, out of the uh, VT. Um, now, the original tail shaft is too long, and that the bulk of that length appears to be the difference in the length in the front shaft, the front half of the shaft, because it's got the idler bearing there. Those brackets are in the same place, which leads me to think that it's the the front, I've only just sort of stuck me out under to look at this, I haven't measured anything yet. Um, so the extra length in the gearboxes at the back of the, the uh, transfer case, the gearbox, and I'll get some video shortly, the gearbox, um, the the hole in the sh in the floor for the gear sticks, etc. is um, all lines up perfectly. And the other thing <coughs> we had to do was use the cross member out of the BT50, slightly different in that area where the mount goes on. Um, so that's this whole cross member, and that mount and that is all, well everything holding the gearbox up there is uh, from the, the BT50, the Dana vehicle. idling now because I've um, connected the accelerator pedal up, plugged it in. Bob's your uncle. Right, 
that uh, project continuing on. Um, got to de-pin and re-pin the plugs for the wiring limb that basically goes to the back of the car uh, to put it in those connectors that come from the, the donor car to go into the donor wiring loom up here. So today just continuing with the de-pinning process. Um, that's sort of everything for the back there. Um, blinkers etc. So that's all going to go into the plug that goes into to there. So help with the deep pinning. What a cheap set of deep pinning tools off eBay. That seems to work. And just then push them down there and undo the plastic clip that retains them. <laughs> 